Joining us now is DePaul University history professor and terrorism analyst Tom Makaitis. Tom, good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning. So what is the, the challenge of uh, trying to do intel on these groups? Well, the challenge is that they're not simply groups. They're a pervasive ideology that is embraced by a lot of people who don't necessarily have a formal ideology. The other thing is with any uh, widespread uh, activity of this sort, you have to sort out the wheat from the chafe. You have to figure out what is background noise, what is braggadocio, and what is a real threat. And that's not a simple thing to do because you're flooded with a lot of information, but they seem to have uh, parsed it pretty well and have a pretty good sense of the threat. And this whole idea, we heard they're, they're doing extra screening of National Guard um, officers or uh, just out of a abundance of caution just to make sure they want to screen everyone to make sure there might not be an insider track on this, yes? Yeah, and it's a little bit more than an abundance of caution. We know that for the past several years, groups like the Oath Keepers actually recruit among active duty and, and retired military. In fact, the Oath Keepers actually have devised a, a special oath asking uh, their members who are serving in the military to promise not to use force against uh, within the country and so on. So there's a real concern here. Um, I don't know how uh, much attention has been given to that presence within the Guard, but I think they're, after what happened, uh, you know, January 6th, they're just being as careful as they possibly can. Tom, uh, how did we get here? Uh, there have been complaints that these uh, groups have sort of gotten a, a pass in, in recent years. Is that an accurate assessment, and if so, why? Yeah, it, it, to some degree it is. I don't know if pass is exactly the right word, but there's no question that, for example, the, the, you know, the director of Homeland Security, one of the things he complained about was that they were told to go softly on these, on these groups and focus on left-wing terrorism because there was an overlap with the president's base. Now, the thing was, of course, the defenders of the president said, oh, well, this is just a radical fringe. This is not the majority. This is not what it's really about. But if you took a look at the iconography that was on display on January 6th, it was quite clear there was a strong presence of hate groups. And, um, you know, I think the other thing is the absence of a domestic terrorism law that allows us to freeze assets and to go after the groups themselves. And I think there's going to be a really good, hard look at that option uh, with the new administration. But we've got to do something because you can't simply sit back and try to spend this much time, energy, and money securing sites forever. You have to actually... Uh, take the threat seriously and make the threats themselves criminal and go after the people that are making them. Talk about the role of social media in all this and really is there a way to clamp down on everything if you know people can spread messages on social media so easily? Yeah, it's a bit of a two-edged sword. I think we've seen how rapidly they, are, they can clamp down when there's political will to do that. We saw, you know, taking uh, access away from Facebook, taking away uh, people's access to their Twitter accounts if they're spreading extremism, even shutting down parlors' access to the Internet. But, of course, people can, uh, can find other ways to do that. And when you do that, it also fuels the conspiracy theory that this is the deep state um, seeking to take away our freedoms. And the other, of course, is... The deeper that they go underground, the harder it becomes to track them. But I think it's a step in the right direction. We have to have a more honest discussion of the boundary between free speech and hate speech. Hmm. All right, Tom McCaitis, we appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you, Tom. You can do it. Have a nice day. You Check of the weather, Paul. Yeah, good morning. Temperatures are in the middle.